built, I believe, eight NTIs. Seven of them were background. One was the hero. The hero we built two versions of. And the hero, that we obsessed on the design. It had to be this, it had to be that, it had to be exactly everything. And what that meant was it had to be sculptured. And so Jim and I worked on that sculpture forever. And when I say Jim, I mean James Cameron and my team. Well, as a result of that, the hero was a cast piece. It's a fiberglass mold, probably 2,000 interior parts fiber optics, iridescent plastic placed in individually, and then this clear urethane cast around it. Well, once we get into the water, because it's thick, because it had to you know, maintain the specifications that Jim wanted to see as a sculpture, guess what? It's thick. The water doesn't lend it this beautiful fluid quality. However, it was the hero. It was the one that those cameras were trained on for you know pretty much 90% of the NTI action in this film. Now, Jim didn't really obsess on the backgrounds because he figured they're going to be in the background. So I'm thinking, why should I sculpt these? Let's just sculpt the heads, the arms, the torsos. And I knew that if we just made frames, plexiglass frames, and poured a quarter inch of urethane around the fiber optic display, and that would be how we created the mantles, that they would move really well in the water. And so, uh, unfortunately, in the, in the final result of the film, the backgrounds move far more elegantly, far more gracefully than the heroes because they were thinner and they worked better. And trust me, Jim was not pleased on set. I mean, every when we get, you know, all eight of these NTIs in this million gallon tank down in San Pedro and he asks the hero to do something through 40 puppeteers on this grid. And then he sees the background right next to it doing the same action, and it looks a thousand times better. He was not pleased. As a matter of fact, I remember the quote might have been something like, Steve, why can't the hero do what number three's doing? And I'm like, wow, it's because it's the, number, the, 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 the backgrounds are, are constructed differently. Of course, why would the hero alien be able to do anything better than the backgrounds? I believe was the quote, it was something like that. Since there was really no possible way of knowing beforehand where the action was going to transpire in this million gallon tank, we had to be prepared for any eventuality. So what we did is we built over this million gallon tank a puzzle. We built a steel catwalk above this tank. And it was a series of grids of three by three foot squares. And you could pull any one of them up. And when you pulled one up, you could drop an NTI through it. And, operate your rig through that. So it was pretty interesting. And there were about 40 people up there operating it. And let me tell you something, when you, when you watch this footage of James trying to direct these eight aliens and, 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 and trying to direct through the lead puppeteer, as a matter of fact, Trey Stokes was my movement designer on this show. He worked throughout the entire show testing and all different types of manipulation techniques. And he led the puppeteers. He was also our lead puppeteer. So that also meant that on set in San Pedro, he was James Cameron's whipping boy. So <laughs> it's pretty funny if you watch it because it's all Trey's fault. If they don't work, it's Trey's fault. <laughs>